Hello, Giovanni here at Fraptools, and today I want to make a patch inspired by the sound of Ryoji Ikeda. So there is already a very nice tutorial that I will link in the description on uh, how to recreate the fundamental sounds of a piece like Data Matrix on Pure Data. So what fascinates me about this patch is that the sound of uh, the Ikeda sound has a very digital flavor to me in, in a good way. And so I think that it is uh, quite a challenge to try and replicate this kind of uh, sound over this instrument, which by design and by nature doesn't have such a surgical precision as a computer. So if we take a piece like Data Matrix, I think that we can break it down into four main uh, timbers, which are the clicks, the sine waves, noise, and a rever highly reverberated drone. So let's start with the clicks, which are the funniest part, I think. And uh, to make them, we can simply take our Sapel clock output and patch it to our channel like this. However, uh, you may realize that this uh, has a thicker timber as opposed to uh, the original uh, song because Sapel's clock is quite uh, thick per se, it's like two milliseconds long. And uh, my idea is to slim it down through um, Kunsa's high pass filter, like this. Oh, sorry, high pass, I said. Like this. And so, first of all, uh, I programmed a sequence. I'm using uh, four uh, tracks and uh, I programmed a gate pattern over channel uh, 1 which we will patch to Sapel and uh, thus override the internal clock so that we will have all the sounds in sync and uh, we can animate if you pay attention to the original song you see that not all the clicks are the same and as a matter of fact, they are pretty different from one another. So my idea is to use the sample and hold output and patch it to control the cutoff frequency. Like this. We can move it up a bit. We can add different... Uh, saturation color and resonance but I'd like to keep it simple in this case because it, it should be a very subtle tone and uh, another thing that we can do is to use um, another random source and automate the pan like this Now another crucial uh, element is the pure sine waves and uh, I will uh, I want to use them um, I want to create them through uh, these other filters here like this one but of course uh, due to constant semi normalization I need to break it here so that I can use this filter here to create those very pure sine sine waves and uh, I like to use for this uh, kind of track a gate which for now I will demonstrate with this palestry here and patch the gate to the resonance circuit so that I can bring the filter the resonance of the filter in and out through a gate 
We may obtain the same behavior by just setting it to fully resonant and then use the gate to control the amplitude after the filter. But I prefer personally the way it uh, brings the resonance in and out because as you hear if I modulate the Q amount very slowly you can hear a sort of whoop, like a, a frequency sweep which by using a gate uh, might add a bit of an analog flavor which uh, is kind of makes more sense in this context at least to me and so instead of using a manual gate like I was doing here we can use a dedicated track for example uh, our track 3 where I programmed a series of gates like this that you can see the pattern lasts for uh, 32 time units so it's like two 16th note bars. We would need to create more like longer structures and non-repetitive structures to be more in the Ikeda mindset. But I think that just to, for demonstration purposes, we can stick to a very brief and overly repetitive pattern. And so I will patch my gate A, B track to the uh, Q CV input. But in this particular range where Kunsa is currently playing, the notes are very, are mostly shorter, like this one. And uh, longer notes uh, oftentimes are very high in pitch or lower. And so to um, make more, uh, to, econ to make an e economic version of this patch, I thought that we can use a CVB that I programmed as bipolar. So you can see that some stages, let me enter the composition mode. You can see that some stages have a negative value and some other have a positive value and this has zero. And so if I patch my CVB to control the frequency, I have super high notes like this one. This is very uh, data matrix kind of sound and lower as this one. And so if I play my track, And if I listen it together with the uh, crackling hi-hat kind of sound, I have this one. I like it, but I think that these uh, stages here are a bit... First of all, I need to make them of the same value. Like this. And I think that they play a bit louder. So... I can now take advantage of the channel VCA to program a separate CV track, this time unipolar, and I will use it to dock this specific gate here, because it's this specific sine wave, because it's a bit too loud, and so I can patch it here. And you can hear that it is now much, much quieter. Now I will also set this one to a lower value like this. Perfect. I can, of course, fine tune the relative amplitude of those sound at this point. The third element is the noise, I think, that we can talk about. And in the, in the original sound, I hear something closer to a, like a broken jack, a kind of a humming tone, like a ground loop kind of sound, which I am not able to recreate here because we, 
we, we like to keep our ground uh, very much under control. But I think that we can uh, make uh, something in the same flavor. I will just use another filter and I will modulate this filter's frequency through a white noise like this. Something like this. I am still having the gaze down here. And uh, I think that we can merge those two sections and uh, patch them to our CGM through the three and four combined output like this. And I can do the same trick as before, so I can modulate my Q parameter with another gate pattern, which can be, for example, our track 4 gate A channel. And I will do just the same as I did with this other filter here. And so we should be able to hear something like this, and we can fine tune it to our desired uh, frequency, something like this. For example, I prefer to have this one here, lower amplitude. We can play with other uh, filter outputs. To have different sine waves. I think that the 24 dB uh, low pass is the mm, mellower one. We can also play with another, mm, like also this filter can use another sine wave, which I think I might like even more than the bandpass sine wave, which sometimes is a bit more distorted. I think that the white noise modulation here is a bit uh, faint because we can still perceive the underlying sine wave timber. So I think I will patch it straight to the volt per octave input like this. Much better. For our highly uh, reverberated drone, we will we can take a sine wave like this one and patch it here gonna be very low. Notice that we are just using sine waves, we are almost running out of generators, we still need another one. And uh, my idea is just to, to close this channel, set the reverb send in uh, pre-fader mode, so we can send this sine wave to our reverb here, which has a sort of shimmer kind of sound, and bring it back. like this. We can also program another gate track if we want to bring the reverb in and out, like this, maybe. But for now, we can keep it all along. We'll need to add another element to this patch, which might not be as characteristic as the other four, but we still need it, which is the kick drum. And to create it, I will use the old technique of uh, using a super low sine wave, like this, and uh, modulate it with a very sharp, unipolar envelope patched straight to the 
exponential FM input like this it's a bit too over the top for this kind of patch so I will patch these output here to my filter number two and then take the filter output and patch it to the CGM again and uh, I will automate my phalistry with a mm, gate pattern, a very fast gate pattern that I programmed here over pattern 1 and 2 of uh, track 1 like this and now I will close the filter and uh, use a uh, attenuated version of the same envelope to control to ping it I can also play with the saturation if I want to add more body but I like to have this very muffled kind of sound. Uh, I also need to override this semi-normalization here because I don't want this to affect these other filters and let's hear how it sounds like with the rest of the things. And let's bring in the drone. I think that we are mostly there, uh, it's pretty much it and uh, so I hope you found this uh, idea inspiring and uh, useful and I will see you next time for more patch tips.